Good morning, everyone. My name is Ahmed Mustafa, and I am a PhD student working at the Center for Energy and Geoprocessing at the Georgia Institute of Technology. The title of my presentation is Spatiotemporal Modeling of Seismic Images for Acoustic Impedance Estimation. Without further delay, I will now begin my presentation. Seismic inversion refers to the process of estimating reservoir physical parameters, for example, acoustic impedance from seismic data. Given a seismic trace, as shown in the figure, we can invert it to obtain the corresponding physical property trace of the rocks. Inversion is usually performed on complete seismic sections or volumes. Given a seismic volume, one can perform inversion trace by trace to obtain the corresponding rock property volume. Seismic inversion plays an important role in seismic interpretation. While the positions of major reflectors can generally be picked out in migrated post hack seismic sections, it is hard to identify the layer lithologies without knowing the rock properties in those regions. Detailed stratigraphic interpretation of a seismic section usually involves its inversion to an acoustic impedance section. Acoustic impedance being a reservoir parameter can be related more easily to rock property measurements obtained through well logging. It allows delineation of major geologic changes in the subsurface since rocks of a similar type would have similar rock property values. Detailed analysis of the inverted parameters enables the identification of the different rock types making up the subsurface that helps reservoir geophysicists to make accurate models of the subsurface and also helps them accurately identify oil and gas reserves. Inversion may either be done in a deterministic fashion, also called model-based inversion, or it may be learned in a supervised fashion from training samples in what is called learning-based inversion. Model-based inversion begins with a smooth model of the subsurface physical rock parameters. It is then forward modeled to produce a synthetic seismic. The error between the synthetic seismic and the observed or actual seismic is computed. This error is then used to update the initial model's parameters. At the next iteration, the updated model produces a synthetic seismic that is hopefully closer to the observed seismic. This process is repeated many times until the synthetic and the observed seismic data match to an acceptable degree, which is hopefully also the point when the initial model converges to the true subsurface model. This is summed up in the following optimization problem, where the L2 norm squared of the difference between synthetic seismic and the observed seismic is minimized over the space of model parameters M to find the optimal model M sub hat. In contrast, learning-based inversion works by extracting the well traces and the corresponding seismic traces at all well positions in the seismic survey. The seismic traces form the features, while the well logs form the labels for the learning algorithm. The collection of all such seismic well log pairs constitutes our training dataset. The dataset is then used to train the machine learning algorithm by minimizing a loss function of the training dataset and the machine learning model's parameters theta over several training epochs. Once trained, we proceed to the next step of model inference, where the trained model is used to estimate a well log trace for each seismic trace in the section, resulting in a rock property section. Here we review the common deep learning architectures that have been used to perform learning-based inversion. MLPs, a kind of artificial neural network, is one of the oldest learning algorithms that has been used to perform seismic inversion. It consists of dense connections over one or more fully connected layers, also called hidden layers, that map the input feature vector to the output. One of the major drawbacks with using MLPs is that it assumes unstructured input, which means that any latent structure in the data is not accounted for. This structure could be temporality in the case of time series data or spatial structure in the case of images. MLPs also require lots of training data to generalize well, and they are very prone to overfitting. The next architecture we are going to review is the recurrent neural network architecture, also called RNNs in short. RNNs fall into a family of machine learning algorithms called sequence models. They are especially suited to time series data where there is a temporal relationship between successive data points. 
RNNs feature extensively in machine translation and speech recognition works. As such, they are ideal for working with seismic traces and bell logs that are also sequences. They maintain a vector of hidden states that allows them to keep track of past inputs to make prediction at a certain time step. They also share parameters across all time steps that allows them to prevent the model from being overparameterized and hence overfitting. Some advanced versions of the original RNN architecture include the LSTM and the GRUs. The third major algorithm we are going to study is the 1D convolutional neural network. Originally popularized for computer vision applications, for example, image classification and object detection, they have also recently begun to be used as sequence models in 1D applications. They consist of trainable kernels that slide over input sequences to estimate the output at a certain point. Deep CNNs can model long-term dependencies in the input through increased temporal context available. Coming back to our problem of learning inversion, say we are given a seismic section and we would like to invert the seismic trace shown in the figure to the corresponding rock property trace. Using only traditional deep learning sequence models that operate on one-dimensional sequences, we expect to obtain noisy estimations of acoustic impedance profiles. This is so because the network does not take into account the spatial context information from the neighborhood of each trace. We hypothesize that incorporating this information would lead to much smoother, accurate, and robust estimations of the inversion profile. So now that we have identified a potential method to improve the robustness and continuity of inversion estimations, we propose using a seismic image patch centered at the position of the log that we are trying to estimate to, as an input to the framework. This patch is full depth of the seismic section and a few samples wide to include neighboring seismic traces into the estimation. The sequence models we have discussed thus far only process 1D sequences. There is no simple way of having them process image data while retaining the 2D structure of the image. A natural candidate for this job would be the 2D convolutional neural network. A 2D kernel would process entries of the image as it slides over the various regions. The only drawback is that it does not have the specialized sequence modeling capabilities of the RNN and 1D CNN architectures. To get around this problem, we extend the kernels in subsequent layers in the network along the depth axis through dilations. The dilation factor is increased over each layer, resulting in long but highly sparse kernels. This result this results in our network having the sequence modeling capability of an RNN combined with the spatial context of a 2D CNN. We demonstrate our method of 2D spatial context-based seismic inversion on the synthetic open source SIEM dataset and the accompanying acoustic impedance model. This section measures 15 kilometers in depth and 35 kilometers east to west. The seismic data was obtained through reverse time migration and as such contains migration and imaging artifacts that may be found in a real-world seismic survey. As shown by the arrows, we uniformly sample a total of 14 training samples over the complete length of the section. This gives us a well approximately every 2 kilometers in the acoustic impedance model, which is less than 3% of the total training data available to us. Each training sample consists of a feature vector denoted by x sub i and the corresponding label y sub i. The feature vector is a seismic image 7 samples wide and the full depth of the seismic section, which is 751 samples, centered at the well position. The label is of course the acoustic impedance log centered at this seismic image feature vector. The collection of all such seismic image well log pairs constitutes our training dataset. In this slide, we describe the architecture of our network. As can be seen, the seismic input image is input into the feature extraction module, which is a block of 2D convolutional layers of the form uh, described in the previous slides. 
the kernels in these convolutional layers stay fixed in width, which is three samples, but they increase in height every layer by an exponentially increasing dilation factor. This helps us to model the seismic image along depth as a sequence and also incorporate the spatial context for each trace from its neighborhood to make regularized estimations of the rock property. The output activations of the feature extraction module are input simultaneously into a regression module and a reconstruction module. The output of the regression module is the estimated rock property profile, whereas the output of the reconstruction module is the reconstructed input seismic image. Now, reconstructing the input seismic image is not the primary task that we are interested in, but we do that anyway because it's it's a form of multitask learning where you are learning related tasks at the same time. And it has been shown in studies that learning related tasks simultaneously helps the network to learn more generalized features since the different tasks can share mutually beneficial information with each other. The loss function uh, we use to train our network with has two different components. The first component comes from the L2 norm scare difference between the estimated rock property profile and the ground truth well lock. The second loss component comes from the difference scared between the reconstructed seismic input and the actual seismic input image, and it's called the seismic reconstruction loss. The two loss components are weighted by factors alpha and beta, and these factors help the network to emphasize or de-emphasize the importance of the two learning tasks relative to each other. We train our network using the popular deep learning library called PyTorch. We use the Atom optimizer and we use the gradient descent algorithm to train our network for 900 epochs. Once trained, the network is used to estimate the complete acoustic impedance profile from the seismic section. The ground truth acoustic impedance model is shown in the top left here. To its immediate right is the acoustic impedance profile estimated by a standard LSTM model, which is a kind of recurrent neural network architecture. One may see that it is completely consistently overestimating the acoustic impedance over a large portion of the model, especially in the center and towards the right, as shown in the region in the black circle it completely misses the high impedance arch present in the original ground truth model as denoted by the black arrows. Overall, the LSDM fails to accurately predict the acoustic impedance profile from the seismic section. Next, we demonstrate the acoustic impedance profile generated by the 1D TCN model, which is a specialized kind of 1D CNN architecture. Uh, this profile is shown to accurately capture the long-term trends in the acoustic impedance over much of the model. The top of the salt, as denoted by the area enclosed by the blue circle, is predicted reasonably well, even if the estimation is rough around the edges. You can roughly make out the top of the high impedance arch present in the lower section of the model, as shown by the arrows in blue. The one thing that could be improved on is the estimation of the short-term high-frequency fluctuations. It can be seen throughout the model how there is a certain amount of fuzziness and blur present around the edges. Finally, we present the estimated acoustic impedance profile produced by our proposed 2D CNN approach. One may immediately observe that the estimation is sharper throughout the region. This can especially be observed at points at the sides of the salt, the left and the top of the high impedance arch in the bottom, and the transition boundary between low and high impedance regions in the top right of the model as indicated by the arrows. The model is even able to capture the tiny grooves at the top of the salt as indicated by the black arrows. All of these observations lead us to the conclusion that the proposed approach is able to estimate acoustic impedance rock profiles better than the 1D sequence modeling methods based on LSDMs and CNNs. We look in a little more detail at the estimations of individual acoustic impedance traces produced by our 2D TCN-based approach and compare them to the ground truth and also the estimations produced by the 1D TCN and the LSDM that are again 1D sequence modeling based methods. We extract acoustic impedance traces at three different positions in the complete section. These are positions that were not part of the training set. 
These happen at 5000 meters, 18000 meters and 30000 meters respectively as shown by the blue arrows. The ground truth impedance logs at these positions are shown laid over the estimations produced by our own 2D TCN method in blue, the 1D temporal convolutional network approach orange and the LSTM based method in green as shown in the trace blocks. Notice how the LSTM fails to accurately obtain both the long and short term trends in the data at many places as denoted by the green arrows. It tends to make completely flat estimations in the right half of the section as denoted by the arrows in yellow. This explains the flat sections we saw earlier in the complete acoustic impedance profile estimated by the LSTM. The 1D TCN tends to do a lot better at capturing the long-term trends in the acoustic impedance. This is observed by its close fidelity to the ground truth. However, it tends to miss the high frequency details in many places leading to fuzzy behavior we saw in the estimation of the complete profile we saw earlier. We noticed this at several points indicated by the orange arrows. On the other hand, Notice that at these same points, the 2D temporal convolutional network based model is still able to capture the ground truth trend, in addition to also learning the long trend behavior. This explains the sharp quality of the estimated section we saw earlier. Finally, we present to you the Pearson's correlation coefficient and the R scare coefficients computed over all estimated traces in the acoustic impedance profile with the ground truth for all the different methods that we employed. This is shown in the table at the bottom. We can see that the proposed 2D temporal convolutional network outperforms both the 1D TCN and the LSDM model at both metrics, scoring a Pearson's correlation coefficient of 0.9259 and an r square coefficient of 0.7977. This also agrees with the superior visual quality of the estimated section by the 2D TCN that we saw earlier. To conclude, we summarize our major hypotheses and contributions in this work. Learning-based seismic inversion is traditionally done on a trace-by-trace -trace basis that discards spatial context information for each trace while 1D sequence models like RNNs and 1D CNNs have the capability to model temporality within each seismic trace, they do not encode local spatial context of each trace into their estimations. This information could be useful to make robust estimations in regions of complex geology and seismic noise. We present a 2D convolutional based neural network that is able to not only model long term temporal dependencies like a 1D CNN or an RNN, but also encode the local spatial context for each seismic trace into the network estimations. This is done via 2D kernels that stay fixed in width but increase in height via dilation. In other words, our network has the capability of a one-dimensional sequence model in addition to the spatial awareness of a two-dimensional convolutional neural network. We test and compare our network's performance with traditional 1D sequence models for seismic impedance inversion on the complex SIEM dataset. Our network vastly outperforms the latter by accurately capturing the long and short-term trends in the acoustic impedance model. Finally, I would like to acknowledge the guidance and mentorship of my advisor, Professor Hassan Al-Rajib, that allowed me to complete this work at the Center for Energy and Geoprocessing at the Georgia Institute of Technology. I am also grateful to my co-author, Dr. Motaz Al-Faraj, for offering his invaluable time and guidance in my journey as a PhD student. Last but not the least, I would like to thank all my group members for their constant support and availability. For access to our codes and a complete list of our publications, please refer to the QR codes below. And with that, I conclude my presentation. Thank you all for your time and patience.